Who were the Olson sisters? Here is their contribution to our early American history. An historical play was created and presented by the Sons of Norway, Scandia Lodge, based on their contribution to our early American history. Professionally, the partnership was made up of Nora Olson and Ethel Olson, American-born Norwegian sisters. Nora and Ethel's mother, Johanna, was from West Central Norway. Born 1846, December the 9th. Nora and Ella's mother, Johanna, immigrated 1860 with their parents when she was 14 years old. Johanna's parents settled on farmland west of Chicago near Madison, Wisconsin. In 1865, Johanna, at age 29, married Otto Olson Bing from Chicago and moved to the Logan District of Chicago. Johanna had three children, Jacob Bing, 1867, Nora Olson, 1870, and Ethel Olson, 1885. Johanna's husband, Otto, was a railroad official and died in a train accident in Leadville, Colorado on February 1899 when Ethel was 14. Joanna, the Olson sister's mother, had a fine singing voice. Early on, Johanna installed a love of music in her children and fostered the talent. Johanna, a witty and charming person, contributed to both daughters' sense of humor. Nora attended Chicago Musical College for two years, but lack of funds prevented her from continuing her musical training except through perseverance. For all of her life, Nora was called Nora. Both she and her sister, Ethel, used their father's middle name, Olson, for their professional names. Nora was the first singer to go into the entertainment business as a soprano singer. Jacob Alexander Bing sang for many years in late opera with the Castle Square Opera Company in Chicago, performances at the Studebaker Opera House. In 1905, Nora joined a newly formed traveling musical concert company. Axel, a classical violin player, had formed a traveling concert company that lasted from 1905 to 1907. Concert player Christine Nielsen and Nora Olson were part of that musical group. Within a few years, both Nelson and Nora Olson had left the group. Nora became a guest soloist with choirs, glee clubs, and choruses and sang both sacred and secular music. In the meantime, Ethel also showed an early career promise and started her career as a reader, actress, at the age of five. Ethel became an accomplished pianist and won a number of musical scholarships. As an adult, however, her greatest acclaim was to become a storyteller. Ethel had a natural gift as a mimic, which became very useful in her sister's musical career company. Nora started her own company, Musical Act, the Olsen Sisters, in 1909 and brought her sister Ethel and piano player into the show. The Olsen Concert Trio consisted of Nora, Ethel, and her piano, piano accomplice, accomplice Alice R. Walden. The Olsen sisters later came to fame would become because of Ethel, the youngest of the two in her storytelling. It was the humorous stories in dialect about Norwegian immigrants adjusting to life in a new nation and coping with a different language. It soon made the sisters very popular entertainers. Ethel would tell goofy stories about mixed-up immigrants in a kind of mix of broken English and Norwegian. Quoted often by newspapers, Ethel's Norwegian dialect stories made even the most stiff-necked pessimists crumble with laughter. From 1909 to 1923, the sisters were with several touring groups of entertainers in the Midwest. In 1915, a Norwegian newspaper article from that same year comments on their popularity. 
While the others ceased touring after one or two seasons, these three ladies returned invariably year after year. And one new city after the other is added to their tour, and this, as it should be, for they bring with them much joy and laughter. Later years, their recordings on major record labels and tent show tours also helped them gain a national-wide following. The Norwegian dialect sketches they originated were carried into thousands of homes by way of Victor Records. Both artists emphasize that the records are not intended to ridicule Scandinavian folk, but are merely given as a typical character study. They usually worked with a piano accomplishment and presented a program of visual works, piano solos, and comic monologues. Nora, Nora was the primary vocalist, and Ethel, a soprano, joined her for duets. Their musical repertoire ranged from recital pieces and folk songs to parlor songs and gospel hymns. The sisters' historic fame quickly rested less on their serious music ability than on their original Norwegian dialect stories. The humor in the stories ring true because the Olsa sisters portrayed the immigrants' difficulty in adapting to American life. Example, the old country woman Nora used the dialect of her mother's birthplace. In their story at the movie touches on the homesickness for the old country. The baseball game recounts the Norwegian woman's misadventures with the national pastime. Ethel, a native of Logan Square neighborhood in Chicago, set the monologue, The New Bookcase, about a bookstore on Milwaukee Avenue. In The New Bookcase, Ethel mentions the locally published newspaper located on Milwaukee Avenue. Milwaukee Avenue is one of the area's busiest commercial streets. A magazine article from 1924 relates how Ethel drew upon an incident in real life for her sketch, A Nor Norwegian Woman at the Telephone. While on the tours, the Olsen sisters appeared in small-town opera houses, civic halls, churches, and college auditoriums. They became a national ethnic stars after 1915 when they received a wider exposure by joining the tent show circuit. In the summer, when hot, warm weather made indoor facilities unstable, they were performing in big brown tents of the traveling tent shows. Tent shows were traveling groups that operated in the United States from 1903 to 1930. They moved from town to town, given a program of lectures, concerts, and recitals in a large circus tent. Tent shows decreased with the invention of the radio and the development of other forms of entertainment. The first recording session was sometime in 1910 era for the Edison firm. Very little is known about these records, even their titles. They could have been of the two-minute, four-minute cylinder type or the thick discs with sound proportion on just one side. The Olsons were favorites with tent show rural artists starting in 1915. They were often booked for the entire season on the circuit. These traveling groups brought shows of mixed quality to the people of rural areas. For two decades, the Olson sisters entertained tent show and lyceum audiences with a combination of music and comedy. Although their material included Norwegian songs and stories, their programs were typically aimed at midstream audience. Unlike the more lowbrow vaudeville acts that was popular at the time, the Olsen sisters act always maintained refinement and good taste. People often said it was somewhat surprising that Eleanor Olsen, who speaks so many different dialects in Norway, was born in Chicago and has never been abroad. The entertainment business was beginning to change when Nora and Ethel began making records again. In 1918, the sisters started recording for the famous Victor Talking Machine Company. They were featured on a total of 23 songs, duets, and comic dialogues on 11 10-inch records for Victor. On Victor, Edison, Burnswick, and Columbia Records, they were marketed as Norwegian-American artists and their comic monologues emphasized. Between 1918 and 1923, the 
sisters recorded 15 sides as vocalists and 35 sides as speakers. Many titles appeared on more than one record label. Nora Olsen recorded Norwegian versions of three popular hymns for Victor. After a performance on the road, Nora and Ethel were often the overnight guests of prominent local citizens. During their peak touring years, the old sisters, who then lived in Chicago, had a home away from home at Miss Dicka's boarding house in Minneapolis. From its earliest days, Minneapolis and other cities had lots of boarding houses, some of which were successful enough that they were run by the same family for years. Single men who came to Minneapolis for opportunity would typically take a room, find a job, and work toward prosperity. This modest idea of unrelated adults living in one place, shared bath, and sharing meals was practically all over in the frontier times. Other notable Norwegians also stayed at Miss Dicka's boarding house, such as J.A. Purvis, a future governor of Minnesota. Other Norwe notable Norwegian Americans also stayed at the Dicka's boarding house, was a famous Norwegian church painter. Nora and Ethel Olsen were originally from Chicago, but in the 1920s, the Olsen sisters and their mother were also living in Minneapolis. They stopped touring in 1923 when Ethel married Dr. Reuben M. Peterson. Once Ethel was gone with her funny stories, they didn't have much of an act anymore. Also, the change in the times was more focused on talking movies and records in the early 20s was another reason for the end of the sisters' careers. In 1925, the Olsen sisters found another way to share their humorous tales and published a collection of 14 of their most popular Norwegian dialect stories called Just for Fun. The second edition was printed in 1929. The booklet had two illustrations that appear to be the work of the famous Norwegian painter friend. Johanna Olsen Bing, the mother of the two talented sisters, died in 1933. Ethel died in 1943 at the age of 58. Her husband, Dr. Reuben M. Pedersen, died in 1944, a year later. Nora died in 1946 at age 76. Just for Fun was republished in 1979 with a new introduction, some photographs, and more bi biographical information. Nora and Ethel are also available to research at the Minnesota Historical Society. Just for Fun, a play by the Scandia Lodge. <laughs>